In the last episode, I taught you the basics of keyboard photography in the best case scenario, in the studio. In the next few episodes, we'll tackle working with limitations and making the best shots out of the situation. For today, let's focus on natural light photography. Welcome to Print Screen, Episode 2. Natural light photography, as the name implies, uses the light given by the sun to produce quality photos and shots. For our purposes, there are two types of natural light, direct sunlight and shaded or diffused light. Direct lighting is when the sun hits the subject without any modifications or diffusion, producing quite harsh light. Now this can be used to add some point of interest in your photo, but today, we'll focus on diffuse or shaded lighting first and tackle direct lighting in an upcoming episode. Open shade lighting focuses on the area that blocks direct sunlight but is still illuminated from the surrounding light. It produces soft shadows and overall has a balanced light intensity in the whole frame. Now that we have covered the bases, I highly encourage you to watch the first episode to understand the light positions and the gears we'll be using today. But I'll give you a quick summary. Same as the first episode, Grab a table, find a spot where it's being lit by the open shade, and in doing so, find the sun as well. We will be positioning our light on the top right or top left frame of the keyboard. To be able to alter the position of the sun, you must alter the position of your keyboard and table. Now why do we do this? Why do we position the sun on the top right or top left side of the frame? Treat your keyboard as a face. We normally see our faces lit by the sun. Positioning it on the bottom will make us feel unnatural because that's not the way we perceive people. We can apply this analogy to keyboards. The main light source when your keyboard is on your desk is the monitor positioned on the rear of the keyboard. This is the most natural way we see it and that's why we incorporate this lighting setup even for natural light. Going back to the shoot, I'll be using my Artifact 60.1 my end game keyboard with MX Browns and Shenpo PBT keycaps. The camera I'll be using is the Canon M50 with a 50mm 1.8 STM. But in the next few episodes, we will be tackling mobile phone photography. So if you're interested in that, hit like and comment down below. Same procedure as the first episode. Grab your board, grab a desk mat of your choice, and do the top down and side angle shots. Someone commented last time on how I can set up a top down shot without the stands. And to answer that question, we'll just use ourselves as the stands, turn on the level on our cameras, and take as many shots as we please. So that in editing, we'll be able to pick the best one. Light direction also matters in the context of the camera. For the side angle, try and position the camera in a way so that the light is hitting it parallel to the lens. In photography terms, shoot the side of the keyboard with shadows most prominent. This will add depth to the shot and it makes it so that you can see the keyboard better. In portrait terms, this is what we call short side lighting, but we'll tackle that more in the future episodes. Again, focus on the main subject, which is the board. Incorporate props as you wish, or do a clean slate. For this one, I'll focus on a clean team, with just the board and a few variations of the background. Make sure to keep your horizon straight, check if the keyboard has no blemishes or dirt, and most importantly, Compose your shots in a way that's captivating to look at for the viewer. In the shoot, I've kept it simple. To show off that even without props, you could still have a nice shot. If you haven't watched my video on the artifact, I highly encourage you to do so. It has been my main board for the past 4 months and I haven't changed it ever since. The MX Brown sounds and feels so nice and I've recently modded it to have an X-Ring courtesy of Guiltier. But moving on from the board, I got this backdrop from Shopee for around 200 pesos or about 10 USD each. You could pick from a variety of designs, just make sure you'll be buying the PVC material. I'll link them down below. Once you're done, your shots should look like this. Notice how natural light mimics the shots we did in the studio? That's wrong. We're trying to mimic natural light in the studio before, because natural light is the best light. Today we worked out the limitations of using natural light and taking full advantage of it. And we've learned a little about light direction and why it matters. In the next episode, 
I will be talking about mobile phone photography, a topic certainly a lot of you want to see. So if you want that episode to air, voice your support in the comment section below. I got lots more to share. Once again, I'm Johan J. Mimaba, and we'll see you in the next episode.